Well, you, you, you can come in, uh, Paul, if I got it wrong. But it's just uh, a general question along the themes of social media and not getting hooked in and not being controlled by social media. Um, and, ha ha and also having views that one wants to share uh, with others on social media as well and how to do that and in what way to do that. I mean, for me, uh, I can totally relate to that, uh, social media and getting hooked into social media. For me, the, th the thing is, like, power, power comes from your level of consciousness. Like, what you see is wrong and what payoffs you get from the thing will, will change as you transcend the things that are hooking you in. So the main, one of the main, I guess the, one of the main things I would ask myself is how, you know, because when you're doing transcending work, you have to, you have to be, um, you have to be aware of what's hooking you in, what's giving you a payoff, a negative or a positive hit, what makes you angry and what makes you, <clears throat> what gives you a high. <clears throat> so those are the things that the ego will want to get in. <clears throat> things like judgmentalism or being right. Uh, are great ego payoffs. Like, I'm going to tell all the wrongdoers that they're wrong and show them that I've got the best argument and that I'm right. Um, but there's a great ego gain in, you know, intellectually, you know, outsmarting and making them wrong. So, the, the, how, how the ego sees it, well, you know, when you're, when you're at low levels of consciousness, it'll be more like they're the enemy and you're going to you're going to win and you're going to get that great ego payoff of, of uh, doing that. Or maybe even that you're going to like, give such a clever argument that uh, you're going to like, change all of their minds and you're going to like, have an influence on them. Or, um, so all of those things, when they're coming from an ego point of view, um, you ha the thing to, to realize is when, when you're seeing other people as wrong and you're trying to change them, and you're trying to control them, you have, um, uh, you, and if they're, especially if they're below integrity, is you won't have much power, you won't have much spiritual power, even though the words might be very good. Also, you're, you're, also the way you're getting hooked, when you're getting highs and, uh, you know, if you're getting a hit out of doing something, like I've just put a really clever response to their debate on there, and you get a hit from that, you, you can transcend that and you'll have more power to influence. And also, if you're getting hooked in, if you transcend the hooks, one, one of the easy ways to transcend the hooks is to be in the observer. You know, every time someone mention, every time you see this guy on social media and your ego gets either a high or a low out of it or gets angry, I'd go, well, what's observing the anger? What's observing? Why is this image so, you know, I was, I was just seeing an image of a, of a puppy and then this man comes on the screen and I'm suddenly angry and furious. But okay, so, well, what's observing the anger and what's observing my thoughts of this is a bad person or this is a person that uh, just provokes controversy? So, as soon as I go to the observer of my thoughts and the observer of my anger, is the observer affected by this? And if you keep doing that, you're starting to detach from the ego story or, Another way which your ego will hate, for me saying, is to go on social media and the observer. If you go into the social media, your ego will be very upset because it gets no payoff. You know, it's like you're just in the witness there, nothing will make you angry because you just keep going to the observer of the anger. Also, if you see a person that's special in a good way or a bad way, if you go to the observer, they're no longer special. So, Oh, and you can respond. You can respond from the observer. You just respond, but there's not an up and a down from it. So you're in a position of neutrality. Uh, and, and then you um, also, sometimes when you're in a position of neutrality, um, I've often found when I'm in a position of neutrality around things, there's, there's, often there's no point of doing it. Because you're going in, usually when I'm doing, if I'm doing things from the ego, I want to get like an excitement or, or an anger thing or an indignant thing. When you're in the observer, it's like a neutral thing, um, you know, and you're aiming, if you want transcendence, the observer, it's like, well, you know, putting on the kettle is the same as checking on your bank account, which is the same as, um, you know, the same of any other, all activities are equal. There is no such thing, and all people are equal. 
So you're in, that, you're in the witnesser of that. And you can still write, you can start write emails, but you won't get hooked in. Mm. But you won't get a high or a low out of it. You'll be, um, also you'll be able to find that in the witnesser, um, you, can, you can write emails, but you won't be attached to the outcome. You know, like if you write an email from the observer, like, well, this person, uh, you know, this is another way of seeing like climate change. You just write a view in the observer. You just you press the send button or you know, post button and it's out there, but then that's, that vanishes as soon as you've done it, and you're on to the next thing in the observer. So you're not going to go on the roller coaster of up and down. You're not also going to go on the roller coaster of what effect it has, because you're in the observer, and whatever comes through, comes through, and it will have an effect or it won't have an effect. The other thing I would do, uh, always, I, I mean, I prefer, I mean, other people can disagree, I prefer the pathway of the mystic. I see great power in the path. Me clearing what I see is bad in other people. Uh, and it doesn't mean that I can't respond and put my view in, but I want to clear how I see them as wrong or bad, or how I see they need to change for me to feel okay. That stuff it doesn't, doesn't negate me saying, look, this is my view and put it out there, or it'd be good for you to stop doing that, or maybe see it from this angle. It doesn't stop me doing that, or putting my point of view across. But I want to clear every ego motive I have, and every motive I have of wanting payoff from my contribution mm -hmm. into the thing. So I could say, like, look, I think it's, um, you know, it's good for the greenhouse effect if we all had this idea, and I think this is a good idea because of X, Y, and Z. But I want to, but if, I, if my ego is getting involved, like they have to change or they have to acknowledge me or I have to come in tomorrow and see that I'm having an effect on them or I want them all to agree with me. If I'm having all of that stuff, I want to clear all of that stuff in me until I get to, until I've surrendered. If you like, you could say it's surrendering the outcome to God. Just putting out the, putting out what intuitively comes from a neutral place, but then detaching from whatever happens, how it unfolds. And I, and I think this was, um, and, and you know, the thing with, and I always repeat this because it's just a living example of Dr. Hugh Len. And Dr. Hugh Len always says he tries to clear the data of what he sees, you know, forgive the data, the hoponopono, forgive the data to clear it from his own consciousness. So a whole prison, like if you can imagine this, a whole prison of like criminals in, in Hawaii I don't know, axe murderers, dog murderers, who knows what they were doing, but anyway, <laughs> violent criminals. And insane. And, he, and insane. And he just got the files and he forgave them until he held no, un, he didn't see them as, as wrong or bad. He just, there was nothing there. He just cleared the things, all the stuff that came up from, oh, this is an axe murderer, this is a dog murderer, this is a cat murderer. And then he just cleared his data, I forgive you, I love you, I release you, whatever it is. And then it was cleared and there was, it was a, and then all, all the people in that prison got well and they shut down the prison. So, like if I'm on social media and I'm seeing all these bad people polluting the world, yes, I can put out my contribution into social media. Look, this is a good way for you guys to see it. But, I, you know, that I'm seeing them as bad and wrong and that I'm holding, I'm holding this data, as they say, I'm holding this unforgiveness. I'm holding that these, these people have somehow do bad or wrong people or need, I need to change them. I would clear that because also if, like, if I want to do good, actually me clearing me seeing them as bad and I need to get them to change, me clearing that is actually having a positive effect on a mystical level. So this idea of otherwise I'm going at from an ego level, like I have to give a clever argument and get mm. you to change. Yeah. Is this why they say, you know, like outside spiritual world, in that world, yeah. when they say when you're angry and you are, for example, at work or forever using social media and uh, you want to write a response, they say draft it, put it in your draft box and sleep on it. Yes. Because you're writing it in ego. Yes. With it from what I've learned from what you've just shared is like writing, you're writing in an ego, then anger, I'll show you and I'll put intellectual argument across. Yes. And then the next morning, it's easier to be put in an observer position. Yes, that's, that's true. And that's, that's, that's true. That's a spiritual, that's a spiritual thing. Like I mm. try not to, I, you know, if I see people on social media, I'll try not when I think they're all bad and wrong to write from the energy of like, you know, because energetically we're all one, we're all connected. Like if I can, 
if I see people like, oh, you guys are like polluting the atmosphere and you guys are so bad, uh, I actually see it as very, very powerful for me to clear them as being wrong and bad and that I need to change them. It doesn't mean I can't write something, but I actually prefer to write it after I clear my perceptions. You know, I want to, okay, you, you're bad, you're polluting the atmosphere, but I want to like forgive that. Or I cancel my belief you're a bad person. Uh, I can't, you know, I cancel my belief in the greenhouse effect, I'm an infinite being. Uh, I, for me, that would start to clear uh, stuff. I cancel my belief that you're bad. I cancel my belief that God needs me to save the world. I, I'm an infinite being. I, you know, I cancel my belief that God can't handle it. I'm an infinite being. I cancel my belief that uh, I should not let this go. I'm an infinite being. And for me, that actually is having an effect on them and an effect on me because it's bringing in more light. I'm actually, if you like, it's like you can, you can cancel stuff and it affects other people as you let go of them being bad and wrong and you mm -hmm. need to control them. So in a way, I, I prefer a lot to, ha not to say I can speak, speak what I want, but they're words and they will have an effect. But the same words, when I've cleared it in myself, I, th I would say have a much more because I've cleared that you're wrong and you're bad, if I say the same words after I've cleared it, I, th they, I would say they'd have a much greater effect in clearing them after I've cleared my perceptions of you than if I send the same words to you, but I'm really like, you're bad, you're wrong, and I want you to change. I've never sent it the next day in that, in that you know what you drop. Yes. Never sent it the next day because the next day, completely different perception. That's right. And you're just either, it's not worth the bother, or you don't feel so strongly about it, or you rephrase it completely, or... Also, you know, the mystical happens. Interesting. You know, like you're tuning into higher intuition on how to communicate with them. Like when you see, like, these guys are just polluting the environment, they're bad, they're wrong, let me just tell you how bad, let me just tell you what you're doing by doing those actions. From that vibration, you're perceiving them in a certain way, and your, your idea of what to write that will affect them, you're writing from a certain vibration. Now, if I clear that and I go to more of a vibration of I don't need to change this or I see your point of view even though you're wrong, and then you go to those higher vibrations, you start to have a more, your words are coming from a more higher vibration, more powerful, more loving. And often you get, you get what I call, uh, from grace, you get things which, which will be much more powerful in, aff in affecting them than when you haven't cleared it. So you'll have ideas that will come to you, which, you know, which are coming from high love, which will have much more of a potential, which you can't think of until you've cleared them as being wrong and bad, and you're trying to get ego payoff out of it, either high or low from winning or losing. So those mystical, mystical levels of words are not going to come through to you. And sometimes you don't even have to say those words. And sometimes, as you say, as you clear it in you, sometimes they change as well. Or you perceive, you know, you perceive things happening. So I would, I would, you know, and you can feel out feelings, you can cancel beliefs, you can go to the observer, um, and that is my way. I mean, if I saw people on social media, I often try and change, change people to the wrong expression. I try and clear what I see wrong in the situation myself, and you know, I might say some words, but I see a lot of the values like clearing my perceptions. As a, and yeah, you can say the words as well. But actually, the same words will have, a, I'm sure, have a different effect from me if I've cleared it first than if I've not cleared it. I mean, you can tell me what words to say and go, go into that situation. But if I'm holding resentment, anger, and I want to control you, I'm sure there'll be a different situation that will unfold than if I've cleared it and I say those same words to you. You know, because we're, we're one. You, you know, if I say something to you and I'm holding anger, uh, you know, on a mystical level, not on a conscious level, on a mystical level, we're connected, you know. You know, you're just saying the right words, but, you know, you sense something. You know, and you're saying the right words, and you might do it out of fear. But it's not... But when there's... When you're saying it from a high power field... You, also, the other thing, there's a great thing in... Um, you know, this is a great... This is a great thing, and I think it's a mystical thing. Dr. Hawkins, you might, might have heard this. So one day, he, he realised that one of the greatest influences of people is your level of consciousness when you affect people because obviously you radiate out love. And there was one day 
he went in. This is a famous story. He was in he was he was in Sedona in the desert, and he was just like, walking around. And there was an empty uh, something like an empty wooden cabin, and he went in, and there was a rattlesnake. There was a rattlesnake in the thing. And then his first thought was, well, you know, should I run out? Is there a shotgun nearby where I can shoot it? Then he you know within a split second he also realized that his life depended on surrendering the situation to God and inviting in that field of love and oneness. So within a split second, he, he, he surrendered all the way up to probably a level of high, high enlightenment, you know, and surrendered the fear within a split second, because he realized if he was holding fear with a rattlesnake about to, in the same room, and that rattlesnake picked up that fear, he realized that if he didn't surrender that fear very, very quickly, you know, he'd be dead. So he surrendered it and he went into a field of absolute love. And it was like that rattlesnake got caught up in that high power field of love. And he just looked at him and then, he, and, then, and then he looked and there was a field of like love for the snake. And that love was so high, at such a high level of love that the snake was, you know, its nature, it's, it, because he went to a very high level of enlightenment, its nature was subdued by the radiation of that level of extreme love. And then he and then and he left, and the rattlesnake didn't uh, strike him. But you know, so it's like when you surrender at high level your fear and your attack, you invite in miracles. So normally, if you hold, you know, you're in the rattlesnake, and you want to like hit it, or you want to like be afraid of it, or you respond back, then you know that vibration, you're just going to get, you're just going to mm. get, you're going to bitten. Yeah, he so, said he wanted to do something about it, but it, the snake was too close. Yeah, and it was too late. That's right. So they were just like literally kind of face to face. Yeah. So he went into yeah. a level of enlightenment, yeah. of intense love, and that love was enough to, you know, to mm. subdue its its nature, which is predatory, just to strike and kill. So that's the way, you know. So the, is that is that, is that okay? Yep.